show on the fine tuning of our universe, where the critical parameters of physics seem to have be just so in order for anything, galaxies, stars, suns, us to exist. It seems to cry out for explanation, and some would say it shows evidence of design. Well, let me give you a bad argument against that before I give you the good one. <laughs> the bad argument, because it's not epistemic, is that if that were true, we're back to Ptolemy. We're back to putting human beings at the center of the universe. You're saying that I can do all my experiments in particle physics laboratories and discover the laws of physics and measure the mass of the electron. I can look into space and see 100 billion galaxies with 100 billion stars. And I ask myself, why is it like that? To make me. And I think that historically, that's not a good route to go down if you want to get the right explanation of the universe. To imagine that the laws of nature are the way they are, because otherwise I wouldn't be here talking about them, just seems like a cop-out to me. And it might be true, so that's why it's not a very good argument. But nevertheless, it's certainly something we could resist as a first impulse. It's just too cheap and easy. Well, I, and the, what you want to do is to show that the laws of physics have to be the way they are. And, and if, you do, if you accomplish that, then you sort of eliminate that argument, because if you had no choice, it had to be that way, then that's your answer to the question. For whatever reason it had to be that way, maybe that's another question, but that at least answers the fine-tuning question. It would answer the fine-tuning question if we were able to say the laws of physics had to be exactly like they are. But it doesn't seem that we can. Yeah, and I don't think that we can. So I'm not. that's not hopeful uh, an answer for that. Uh, and again, it's not my choice. The universe will eventually <laughs> reveal whether or not they were designed this way or whether or not they had to be this way or whether or not it's an accident or whether or not it's a selection effect. There's at least four different possibilities Go through on the, the table. Go through those because that's important to really understand the question because people jump to a conclusion right. on this very sensitive and emotional issue without understanding the different alternatives. Right. So let's go through So each. one alternative clearly is it is designed, that the parameters were made this way by some external agent so that we could be here talking right. It doesn't about have to be God. It can be a super race that simulated the whole universe. We could universe. live in a computer simulation. Sure. Absolutely true. So that is one possibility. Something designed it. Another possibility is that once we understand all the possible laws of physics, we will find that for one reason or another, there's only one choice that is viable, and here it is. That's what we observe it's around It's the only us. mathematically consistent view, whatever it is. That's right. There's a third possibility that it was just an accident. There is just a fact. The mass of the electron could be different, but it's not, and it's and we're lucky to be here. The brute fact argument. The brute, the nomological fact. There's just that's what it is. Now that is a little difficult because then you have to explain why that independent brute fact enabled us to exist. But we're lucky. There's a sub answer there that I'll get to in a second. <laughs> but let me finish the the sure. fourth answer, sure. which is that there's a selection effect. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you take the volume of space within the solar system, okay, and you say, well. Most of the space in the solar system is in between the planets. Why aren't we surprised that we don't live in between the planets? That's where most of the real estate is. But no one thinks that's a sensible question to ask. No one says, we're surprised that we don't live on the sun because the sun is so much bigger. The reason why is because living here on Earth is just much more hospitable to us being here. There are many different environments within the solar system. You can't act surprised that we came to be in the environment where it's easy for us to come to be. The universe might be like that. It might be that the universe we observe is not the only one that there is. That There are many different environments where the laws of physics look different. And then if it were true that the laws of physics need to be finely tuned for intelligent life to exist, it would be clear that we would arise in those finely tuned regions where intelligent life could exist. And then we're in that condition, we look around, we see what it is, and because we're in that condition, we can ask the question, and therefore it seems like we are special when in fact we're not, because we couldn't exist in the places where we were in special. Yeah, imagine a, a hypothetical planet which had perfectly temperate climate. The temperature was always 70 degrees, life evolved, but it was always cloudy. So you couldn't see the rest of the universe. To the astronomers who grew up on that planet in the early days before radio telescopes, they would say, this is bizarre. There's just one environment in this one world, and it's exactly tuned for us to be here. They don't know that there's a large number of other planets in the universe because they can't see them. We have an atmosphere around us past which we cannot see. It's called the cosmic microwave background. 
It's the relic radiation from the moment the universe was opaque、mm -hmm. and became transparent. So if there are other universes out there with other environments, we will never be able to see them because we can only see so far. Right. Okay. So we have these four alternatives. Let's first say. Is there no possibility that there is a different alternative? So we know we have four that are both universally exhaustive, meaning there's no other possibility, and mutually exclusive. That means if we get one, can be a sufficient solution as well as a necessary one. There's one other alternative, which is actually the one that I believe, which is that we're not finely tuned. People say、uh, that if we change the laws of physics a little bit, life could not exist. I see no reason whatsoever that we should take that claim seriously right now. It might be a true claim, but the claim that we know enough to make it, I think, is bizarrely unwarranted. It is certainly true that if we change the laws of physics a little bit, things would be very different. But the idea that number one, we know what they would be like, and number two, we know enough about what it takes to make life. The requisite requirements that a set of laws of physics would have to satisfy in order for life to be able to exist. Neither one of those is anywhere near true. So I think we should be very humble in two different ways. Number one, the universe was not designed just so that we can be here. And number two, right now we're not smart enough to say whether or not the constants of nature are really finely tuned.